Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 41 of the Horizon series. This week we have a look at how we make the booster fins and also how we attach them. So let's get started. Now that we've built pretty much all of the flight hardware, we now know the actual weight and more importantly, the weight distribution of the entire rocket. So we modeled it here in Open Rocket. Our goal is for the stack to be stable throughout the entire flight. Now we've also included the point masses for where the water will be during launch. Uh, here it is in the sustainer and here it is in the booster. And here we can see that the center of pressure is ahead of the center of gravity. So we can go in and make the fins larger until we get into a stable configuration. Now because the water will be expelled so quickly, it will actually become much more stable very shortly after launch. That center of gravity is just going to move up the rocket as it loses water. And that's how we figured out the size of the fins. So time to make up the fins themselves. We're using an almost identical technique to make the fins that we used on our Typhoon 2 rocket. We're using 3mm plywood as the core of the fins. Anytime we stored the plywood, it would always be between these thick sheets of glass and we'd keep it out of the sunlight just to stop it from warping. Originally, we were going to make up one spare fin, but in the end, we decided to just make up the three. We cut up both fiberglass as well as carbon fiber layers and alternated the weave direction for a more stiffer fin. It was just a matter of pouring on the epoxy and then rolling it out with a foam roller. Each side of the fin has two layers of fiberglass and two layers of carbon fiber. Then we put a sheet of baking paper on top and drove out most of the big bubbles. We used a PVC pipe as a squeegee to more evenly spread the epoxy and drive out the rest of the bubbles. Then we flip it over and repeat the process. When both sides are done, we sandwich the fin between a couple of thick sheets of glass and put some weights on it to compress everything. We leave this overnight to cure. We can then peel off the baking paper. The surface isn't shiny, but smooth enough not to need any sanding. This is the final surface we went with. And here are all three fin plates made up. Then we can transfer the fin pattern to each plate. It was easy enough to use a hacksaw to cut the fins out, although we did go through a couple of blades uh, because they wear out quite quickly on the carbon fiber. The edges can be sanded square. We're not bothering with shaping the leading or trailing edges of the fins. Uh, they're thin enough. Because the edge of the plywood is exposed, we apply a couple of coats of epoxy over the edge to seal it. Our finger was the easiest way to apply the coat of epoxy. The fins are about 4.5mm thick. Normally the fins would be attached with an epoxy fillet to the side of the pressure chamber, but we want to make these fins removable to make it easier for transportation or repairing the fins if they need it. 
So we opted to make a set of brackets that will be glued to the pressure chamber and then use furniture bolts to hold the fins in place. It would have been easier to make the brackets out of aluminium L channel, but we really had no way of reliably curving one of the channel sides. So we decided to mold the brackets from carbon fiber. For that, we first needed to make up some molds. The molds are made from a couple of steel angle brackets with a curve profile 3D printed from several sections. Here is a short cross section of what the mold looks like. The printed sections were just epoxy to the steel brackets. Because the molded brackets need to have quite a bit of thickness to them, rather than layering lots and lots of individual cloth pieces, we decided to go with a couple of the heavy carbon fiber sleeves. These were just leftover remnants that we already had. We added a couple of single sheets of cloth uh, on the outsides with different fiber orientation just to stiffen everything up. We wetted out the sleeve from both sides first before adding it to the rest of the sandwich. Everything was just sandwiched between two sheets of baking paper. And then we used a PVC pipe to squeegee out the excess glue and drive out any of the bubbles. The whole sandwich was then placed on one of the mold sides and compressed with the other side of the mold. The mold sides were then further compressed with a set of clamps and left overnight. The next day we can remove the bracket from the mold. The bracket turned out quite good and had exactly the right shape. We then made up five more of these over the course of a week. We used a diamond cutoff wheel with a Dremel to trim off the excess. This is definitely a lot easier than the hacksaw. And here are the three fins with the six brackets. We first drilled out only one side of the bracket. Then we assembled it with the fin and the other bracket and drilled out the rest of the holes. This made sure we had an exact and snug fit for all of the bolts. Each fin weighed in at around 250 grams. Before attaching the brackets to the pressure chamber, we first added a wrap of baking paper to the fin. This would prevent the fin from sticking to the brackets. We used lots and lots of 24 hour epoxy to glue the brackets on. We wanted to avoid any large air pockets in the epoxy because these brackets would undergo a lot of forces, both in flight and when landing. We also gave the brackets themselves a liberal coat of epoxy. To make sure the fin stayed aligned, we used our fin jig on top of the pressure chamber. Over the next two days, we repeated the process with the other fins. Here we're checking for fin alignment down the booster using a calibrated eyeball. We 
When inserting the fin into the brackets, we just roughly align it with the holes and then use something like a screwdriver to get that final exact hole alignment. These are the furniture bolts we're using to attach the fins. They have a low aerodynamic profile that's symmetric on both sides. They can be tightened really well with an Allen key and they have a smooth wall where they come in contact with the bracket and the fin for better force transfer. We were really happy with how well the fins and brackets turned out. So that's it for this week. In next week's episode, we put the whole booster together. We painted, do a wet dress rehearsal, get it ready for flight. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.